Let's learn how to create some hand-drawn symbols in Illustrator. So I'm placing a hand-drawn leaf that I've created and I've already opened this up into Photoshop and played with the contrast to make sure that it's high contrast and black and white. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see this and then I'm going to go and get my image trace window and you can go to window and select image trace if you can't see it. In image trace, I want to make sure my mode is black and white, and then I can play around with the threshold a little bit, and if I select preview, I can see what this is going to look like. And when I'm happy with it, I can hit expand, which is up in my options window there, or my options menu. Now I can go to direct selection, that's that white arrow, and I can select the white box that's around my shape and delete that, and then select my shape and start editing the colors. If I go to edit colors, I want to make sure that it's CMYK, and if I see that I don't have the option to convert it to CMYK, then I know that I'm good. If not, you can just click convert to CMYK. And then what I want to do is just choose different values. So I'm going to go through each of these white parts of my leaf and choose some different values within just black, white, and gray. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to be able to recolor my artwork later but I want the values to kind of indicate what colors go where. I don't want to um, kind of limit myself to a certain amount of colors right off the bat. So I'm just going to go through and kind of select values that make it look like it's got a good amount of variety and, and it looks pretty interesting. Now if you wanted to create like a coloring sheet um, using the same technique, you would just keep all of those parts white. Alright, so I'm selecting everything with the direct selection tool and then uh, clicking on my recolor artwork button, which is that little color wheel. I'm going to go into edit and then if I click I can find some already um, chosen libraries of color and I've, here I've chosen earth tones and I can still adjust the saturation, the brightness, even the hue of these and then go up to my options at the top and choose different color schemes. So I could do analogous, I could do complementary, I could do monochromatic, there's a wide variety within these different libraries of color. And then I could even try different libraries later. Um, you can also go into these color wheels and edit specific colors just by double clicking onto one of those uh, circles in the color wheel and moving it around. But I'm just kind of playing with the already loaded uh, color schemes that they have. And when you're happy, you can hit OK. Now we're going to open up our symbols window. It looks like a little um, club and then if you don't see that you can go to window and select symbols. And I'm going to select this with the direct selection tool and click and drag that in. I want to create a, a static symbol and a graphic. So I'm going to choose that and then um, I'm going to break the link to the symbol. And the reason that I do that is now if I edit this, I won't edit the symbol. So now I can go in, I can edit it again, choose a different library. Maybe this time I'll do brights. So here I have the brights. It's very different from the last set of colors that I had. Um, but I can still color that same artwork because I was working with just values before. So now I can kind of go through, that's looking pretty good, and I can select it all and add that. And again, I want a graphic and a static symbol and hit OK. So now I can delete that and go over to my symbol sprayer tool. And I want to make sure that my symbol sprayer intensity is set to 1. And everything else seems fine, so I'm just going to hit OK. And now if I click once, I should be able to create that symbol that I just made. Um, and I'm, I've created that symbol because I'm currently clicked on it. I'm expanding it here. I've gone into my, um, my transform tool by hitting E. And then I've expanded that up, scaled it up. And now, you know, I can kind of zoom out here so I can see a little bit better. If I go back to this, the symbol sprayer, I can spray again. If you spray two in a row, though, you'll see that that becomes one object. So you just want to spray one at a time. If you hold down your command key and click with your direct selection arrow in between, then you should be able to just hold down the command key, click, and then spray again. 
and I've sprayed two more symbols in different colors here and I'm going to use my transform tool E is the keyboard shortcut for that to transform just move that over and I can also zoom in here and I can arrange these by bringing that forward or backward by holding my command key and hitting my brackets or my bracket keys so open bracket is uh, bring it forward close bracket is close it I can edit the colors, I can double click on the um, new color and change that in my color picker. And so now you can see that that has changed and it's changed in both of the instances of that symbol. So now if I wanna just change it in one of those symbols and keep the other symbol the same, I can do that. But um, if you remember, you have to go up here and break the link to the symbol. So now I can go through and I can change this different color and you'll notice when I hit OK, it only changes in one of those symbols. So if you do want to make these changes in just one, make sure you break the link to that symbol. So once you have a variety of symbols that you've created, these nature Zen Tangle symbols, and of course I only have two, but you'll have more, um, then you might find that you want to go through and recolor the whole thing. So you can select all of your symbols and then go into that recolor menu again and maybe you choose a completely different color scheme for them. Um, and you'll see it really does dramatically change the look of those symbols. And again, if you don't break the link with your original symbols, that will also change them in your symbols window. Um, so make sure if you don't want to change these permanently that you you know, have gone through and um, broken those links before you start. And you would just do that by selecting all of them and then going in and breaking the link with the same menu option that we've been using. Now, once you start moving these around, you can use your transform tool. And again, the keyboard shortcut for that is E. And we can kind of position them into interesting kind of flowery and, and, and floral kind of patterns or even just kind of Depending on the types of Zen tangles you have, if you have vines or leaves, you can start to create these different kinds of larger compositions based on these smaller symbols. And then, of course, remember your positioning as well. Um, you would use your command key and your bracket to move something forward or backward. Um, so here I just move that forward by my command close bracket. And you can use a shift in that to bring it all the way to the front or all the way to the back. So command shift close bracket will bring it all the way to the front and then vice versa that will bring it all to the all the way to the back. Make sure you save the symbol library and we'll just go to that same menu that we've been using to break the link and then go down to save. You can title it nature Zen Tangles. Make sure you do that after you've created all of them. I have not created all of mine so I'm going to cancel that. But you can see that's it. So go have some fun and create some interesting Zen tangles.